Okay, so um, I'm Jay from Farmbound, and we deliver organic food to communities throughout BC. Uh, we specialize by partnering with small local producers, and we have an online platform where people can order, and we pack and deliver it to people's homes. I'm David Scarlatescu. I'm a restaurant owner here in Vernon, BC. I've been in Vernon since I was eight years old, and I've had the restaurant for coming up on four and a half years, and two of those years have been through COVID. Well, my name is Sam. I live out in Coldstream and I work at Value Plus 3% Ministry. My name is Elmez Wilder. I'm the owner and barber of Ritual Barber Shop here in Vernon. I moved at four years old here. I was adopted. Um, yeah. From, from where did you? Romania. Romania, oh. Yeah. It was very Europe popular back then. <laughs> Seriously, in the 90s, they adopted a lot of kids. From there. Uh, <laughs> okay, my name is Heather Comazzetto. I am the owner of the Hot Room at Studio B. We are a hot yoga studio in the heart of downtown Vernon. Perfect, good. That was fast. So you can, you can talk just like... I talk so, so fast all the time. <laughs> Sorry about that, don't worry about it. So my name is Charlie Hampton. I'm self-employed as an artist and a teacher. Um, I live in Vernon, BC. We've been here since 1993. I got three kids and six grandchildren and um, two things that my wife wants me to do. So that's kind of me. My name is Meredith Turner. I live in Vernon, British Columbia, just outside on the old Kamloops Road. I live on my family farm right now um, and I'm a registered nurse and I am a farmer in training and I am looking to create um, a space on the farm uh, for community and events. My name's Steve Piper, S-T-E-V-E-N, I think, yeah, that's right. Uh, my name is Serena Nikolai, I'm from Vernon, uh, and I opened my studio in December 2014. Okay, this is going to be hard. <laughs> my name's Deanna Meredith, and I am an owner at CrossFit Vernon, and I am also a teacher. My name is Jeremy Meredith, I'm a CrossFit coach and owner here at CrossFit Vernon. Not look at the camera. No, never. <laughs> Let's start over. <laughs> so my name is Amber Zillot, um, and I am an operating room nurse. I um, am a scrub nurse in surgery, so I'm the right-hand man to the surgeon, handing them their instruments as they're operating. My name is Rodney Goodchild. Um, I am the center manager for the Vernon Community Arts Center. I've been here about... 11 months now. I've been in, but I've been involved in Vernon for 16, 17 years. So I have, feel I have landed in a very good spot. I was literally coming to work this morning and realized I work in a fabulous spot. I work in a park, in an art center. And I've reflected on all the other locations I've worked in my life. And very few would match a beautiful park in a city center, so. Would you like to go first? No, you go. Okay. Uh, my name is Terence Limbert, living here in Vernon, British Columbia. I uh, grew up in Chilliwack, British Columbia as well, and moved up here about seven years ago in 2015 to start coaching at this gym, which now I own with my fiance, Bonnie. Bonnie McMillan, living in Vernon, BC, born and raised in Coquitlam, British Columbia, down the Lower Mainland, moved out to Edmonton, and then moved out to Vernon three years ago and co-own with Terrence. Uh, white Huskel Holt and Chai Squeeze, Sheldon Lewis, Kintel uh, Inkmapalax, Ur Sinkluchten. Hello, my name is Sheldon Lewis. Uh, I come from the uh, north end of the Okanagan Lake, the Okanagan Indian Band, uh, the, the Silk people. Um, I currently am in uh, board of Directors role here for the Arts Council of the North Okanagan. I'm also a Board of Directors for the Greater Vernon Museum as well. I am also a political representative for the Chief and Council for the Okanagan Indian Band and sit on numerous uh, different education tables, economic development tables. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a, a broad overview of, of me as well. I'm, I'm also a professional artist as well too. 
I'm Teresa Sanders, and I am the owner of Phil Vernon's Refill Store. Phil is a refill store where you can come and fill your cleaning and hygiene products, and we encourage you to use your existing containers. Our whole goal is to reduce plastic in the environment, and specifically plastic pollution. We want to keep plastic out of recycling because only 9% of plastic worldwide is recycled. Uh, Lyle Brooks. Uh, I'm originally from Ottawa. I moved to Vernon in October, road tripped out here and uh, always wanted to live in BC, always wanted to live in the Okanagan. It's close to a ski hill and uh, got into health and optimization space here during COVID and uh, yeah, I came out here with really no expectations and been pretty blown away since I've moved here. It's a great place to be. I'm uh, not from here as well. It's pretty cool. The energy, the people, the vi <laughs> it's just fantastic. It's really great. People are really laid back here. Yeah. Do you remember how you became aware of it? Where's the first uh, moment or place you heard first about? Dude, that's actually a really funny story. It's it's hilarious how it happened. So I actually first found out about COVID and like started hearing about it, like everyone on the news. But it was in December, and. I was at a show at a local local pub, and I was there with some friends, and we were watching kind of this show. And friends that we were with, uh, uh, the guy that was there said, man, have you heard of this COVID thing that's happening in China? And I was like, yeah, it's not, I mean, it's just in China, though. It's not that big. He's like, man, he's, I'm kind of worried. Like, what if it comes to Canada? I'm like, it's not going to come to Canada. Like, it's in, it's in China. Like, they're going to get it under control. I'm like, and what is it, like a flu or something like that? And we still laugh about that to this day because that was December 2019, and, and here we are in, in February 2022, and how much of our lives it's actually taken over. It's really wild to think about it. Yeah, I remember first hearing about it, uh, it was in Mexico, and it was more of a joke, and I didn't take it seriously at all. I thought, you know, we had Ebola, we had bird flu, swine flu, H1N1, all of these different things that had happened over the last 10, 20 years, and nothing ever happened, and it was this big hype, and it was this big fear on the media, and then it just kind of went away. So I just assumed assumed that it would be another one of these. Yeah. I was actually just about to take off to Australia when I heard about it and I kind of thought it was like just like um, internet people trying to scare you, right? And so I was like, ah, oh, whatever. And so I went to Australia and then I had to cut my trip home early because that's when it actually started to get kind of serious. Yeah, the, at first I was just like, oh, this is fear mongering. Like, this is a big chess game with the government. They're trying to do something here, but I'm just going to go travel about it. And then, yeah, and then it started to get serious and Australia got really serious. So then I came back. Honestly, I didn't really have much of a memory with it. I just think it came like, like a ton of bricks. It was a very like fast moving thing. Um, also the barbers within our community, this was like a really um, unfortunate thing that we were the last ones to know. So like I actually got a text message from one of my buddies at the gentleman shop, Brett, and he was just like, so did you, did you know that you're, you're not supposed to be working? And um, I was like, what? Uh, it was like eight o'clock in the morning and I had already done a client. And then I was like, well, I guess, I guess I have to fold. So I didn't really have like the opportunity to, to actually like really think about what's happening until it already happened. I remember, um, I don't think I actually heard about it on the news or anything. It was my husband that told me. He was over in Europe, I think he was. And he was, called me and was like, you need to go to the grocery store. <laughs> you need to go buy all the food. And I was like, why am I buying food? And he just like, starts talking about COVID and stuff like that. I'm like, OK, this sounds crazy, but sure, I'll go do that. <laughs> yeah, the one thing that just pops up into my head was I was hanging out with a girlfriend, and we had seen it online talking about um, this virus that was spreading. And I was like, oh, no, it's just the media, it's fine. And then started hearing more and more about it. And we're like, is everything actually fine? We're like, this is really weird. Go through Kelowna and Costco had probably like a mile long lineup because everyone was freaking out about food and saying that you had to buy like an abundance of food because we were gonna have a food shortage and there was just so much unknown fear going on. So as soon as I seen the lineup at Costco, I was like, whoa, things are getting real, like what's happening, right? So that's when fear started to kind of kick in for me. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of spiraled from there. 
actually, um, the first thing I thought of was I don't have a grandfather because he died in the Spanish flu. So that was really the first thing I thought of when COVID came around. I'm thinking, wow, the impact it had on my family. And um, yeah, and uh, it, it just sad to know that my dad never knew his father because of a, a, an influenza like this, so yeah. I was working in the intensive care unit here in Vernon as a registered nurse, and um, I remember um, it distinctly because we'd been kind of hearing stuff on the news about like kind of other places, and we were wondering kind of when it was going to come to North America, and then that it had come to North America. Um, and I remember uh, being in like the break room talking to my fellow nurses, and we were kind of like, whoa you know, like this is now it's here and then now that they're locked down. And so it was a lot of kind of like a fear state at work for sure. And, and the wondering like, what is this gonna look like? We'd seen stuff on TV about other areas that had have massive outbreaks. And so it was kind of like this surge of like fear and a little bit of like, okay, how are we gonna get through this? And what is it gonna look like? And what is work gonna mean? Um, because work was gonna change drastically. I don't think I really paid much attention to it until they came out in BC and said that this was serious and that the, I believe the first thing to happen that I remember distinctly was that the borders were going to close and I, that's the moment when I was like, oh, this is, this is real. Uh, but that was, yeah, I think that was probably January, February, somewhere in there. That's the first time I thought, okay, this is a real virus of some kind of big problem. Yeah. Uh, we were coming back from my fourth annual Zumba in Mexico. So every year we go to Mexico and we were just coming back in March 2020. And we started hearing about COVID and wearing masks on the plane back. And I think it was five days after we got back from Mexico is when we got the announcement that uh, we had to close. So, yeah. And before you, you happened even like, you were not aware at all? Of Zero. I thought, I didn't think that we would be closed down. I didn't think that they would close businesses or cl close the world, <laughs> you know, uh, during that. It just felt like it wasn't going to happen to us. So it wasn't even in my um, thoughts to think about what would we do if. Honestly, I didn't think it would turn into what it was today. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, obviously we heard through the news and the radio, like, oh, this, this coronavirus or COVID-19 thing's coming mm -hmm. about, and obviously it wasn't in Canada quite yet. and. You know, it, was, it seems like oh, it was just a pretty nasty flu. You wash your hands, don't touch your face, you're gonna be okay. And then, you know, it just, as it started to, oh, you know, there's the first case in Canada and then you're like, oh, like, oh, we'll be okay. Just wash your hands, <laughs> it'll be fine. And then, man, it just escalated so yeah. quickly from that and yeah. I felt like I was living under a rock in January and February because I had just opened the business. So all my hours were spent in here. But I do remember the moment when someone came through and asked if we had hand sanitizer because hand sanitizer was selling out everywhere. And that was kind of my first moment of, okay, this is actually something I need to pay attention to. So with that, I started to become more aware. So I um, was still actually working in the hospital at that point. But as far as it goes, we hadn't seen anyone with COVID and it was just kind of back backroom talk, not necessarily something that was forefront on right. our minds at that point. Yeah, so early 2020, I got my, my dream job working with Transat after years of working up north in Canada and for other express carriers and started training at the beginning of February, uh, right, right before COVID started. And I remember I was in the simulator in Montreal right. and the training captain actually had just finished a flight to Casablanca. Uh, he came back from Casablanca to Montreal and he had mentioned that this person was sick. And when they landed, there was a, a bunch of people that were taking this person off the plane. Not like, not like a normal medical emergency. And we kind of all were just thinking, oh, okay, like something must have happened. And then a couple of days later in the, in the training facility, we, we heard of this possible virus or whatever it was. Uh, and that a few flight crew members had gotten it. And we were just thinking, okay, like at this point, Maybe it's like SARS or it's, or it's like H1N1 or, or something along those lines. And, and we're like, okay, uh, whatever, it'll be two weeks later uh, and then it'll be over. Uh, in hindsight, that definitely wasn't the case, but we thought 
it would be done, and about two, three weeks later, Montreal pretty much shut down. It was the first place that was hit in Canada. They had their early spring break, I think, before most of the rest of the country. And uh, we continued with our training. Uh, we were exempt from a lot of the lockdowns because of our, our occupation. And so we continued, and then what eventually happened was, you know, I was talking with friends back home, and I was noticing when I was going to the grocery store, you know, people had carts full of toilet paper. Like, you know, like, no lie, right? And my partner at the time had asked me actually to pick up groceries for when I came home to Ottawa because the grocery stores were empty. Uh, and so I remember that pretty, pretty well. And, and then our, eventually our training got shut down. Or just our, our company was not comfortable and our union wasn't comfortable with pilots in cl close proximity not knowing what was happening. So that was really the beginning for us and we kind of found out really early and it really escalated quickly. Yeah. Um, so in early 2020, I was um, working pretty hard at the business to get it to a place where I could actually take some time off um, because I was very pregnant at that point. Um, so I remember hearing about COVID happening in Wuhan and being aware of it around the time we were going to the hospital for me to have the baby. Um, because at that point they were talking about washing your hands and being diligent, but it wasn't really a big thing yet. It hadn't really emerged into North America as much yet, I feel, feel like. Um, so that's my initial sort of remembrance of hearing about it and being aware of it. Um, was being very pregnant and being really busy at work at the gym. I first became aware of coronavirus, is what we were calling it back then, through all of the internet hilarity around stupid people associating it with Corona beer and not wanting to drink Corona beer because of coronavirus and all that stuff. And I, what stands out to me is the memory of it being very much downplayed um, in like social circles and within the media as not really a big threat. And unless you had visited China or other Asian countries very recently, it was not gonna be a big deal. And very rapidly that became not the, uh, the way that it played out. For me, um I just felt that I wanted to share what I had, and that kind of got me thinking about teaching. <clears throat> so um, we had an opportunity here at the Art Center. Um, one of the teachers left, and uh, basically without any teaching experience, I said, well, I'll do that. And um, it was uh, interesting because when I had pitched the idea of teaching here, uh, it was just before the pandemic. And then the art center shut down for two and a half, three months. And um, in an effort to, when they started to reopen, uh, in an effort to get going again, my, my teaching opportunity was put on the program, but people weren't really signing up for much of anything. And um, so that would have been through 2020. We kept trying as an art center here to promote classes and <clears throat> it was very slow in people's willingness to be part of in-person in, in teaching. Um, actually, I was the first hospital employee at KGH to be diagnosed positive with COVID. I was patient zero, as they called me. So I think that was the scariest because it was more of just a fear and I didn't know what was going to happen to me that I kind of got it and was figuring it out all in one. And actually, while I was away, I had people messaging me every day, asking me my symptoms. Like, everyone wanted to know because we were still figuring it out, right? So I had people I barely knew asking me how I was feeling, what I was doing. I was working for an organization that was impacted by COVID. And I suppose, in a sense, I was looking for other opportunities that, you know, that were in our area. I already lived in Vernon. I knew of Vernon. I was aware of the art center through my partner, who's an artist who uses the facility, has showcased in the facility, has been an artist in residence here. So I was aware of it. I'm not art myself. I was just made aware of the facility, but I got to know the staff and I got to know the center. I got to know the management of the board. And here we are. And I completely respect what others think is best. Um, at the same time, I just really wanted them to also respect what I thought was best. It came and it changed and it evolved. Get lost from our own 
crazy world. Am I, am I ready for this? It was just very, very high stress. Nothing like this had ever happened. There was just a lot of unknown about the whole thing. And he was like, you guys need to shut down. If we are forced to close or if we need to close, what's gonna happen? So did you, during the first lockdown, do anything that you wouldn't want anybody to know? Of totally off the record. You it's say that now, but like wait till <laughs> the video comes out. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>